Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Can you hear me? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers of this uh, workshop to give me this opportunity to present my recent work. Uh, <coughs> uh, my name is Furukawa from Totori University. And uh, this is a presentation uh, shows a new uh, method to calculate three-dimensional magnetohydrodynamics equilibrium. Equilibrium is a force balance state or a stationary state of the evolution equation. <coughs> uh, my study is mainly uh, related to uh, thermonuclear fusion. Uh, you may not be interested in the <laughs> actual uh, applications, but uh, uh, this is strongly related to the thermonuclear fusion. And uh, for thermonuclear fusion, uh, we use a uh, very high temperature plasma. And especially, uh, this is a nice cartoon of the JT60 SA device, which is under construction now at the Naka, Ibaraki, Japan. And here we have a torus plasma. And uh, plasma is a collection of charged particles. And the uh, charged particle is uh, gyrates around the magnetic field line. So basically, uh, plasma can be confined by using magnetic field. And uh, this is a schematic view of this uh, torus plasma. <coughs> and if we follow a magnetic field line in the plasma, then uh, in the axisymmetric torus system, the magnetic field line form a, a surface uh, called the flux surface. And uh, that surface is normally uh, nested like this. And on the nested uh, flux surfaces, uh, pressure is constant uh, normally in the axisymmetric system. And this kind of uh, macroscopic behavior of the plasma is uh, often described by the model magnetohydrodynamics, which is called MHD. And the equations are this, these uh, equations and continuity and the equation of motion adiabatic equation, Ohm's law, and uh, Maxwell equations. And uh, in this presentation, especially we drop the dissipation effects, which is called ideal MHD. <coughs> and the force balance state of this equation is very essential for fusion research, because if such a stationary state doesn't exist, then plasma cannot be confined in the experimental device. So, the uh, force balance equation is uh, written here. So this is the force balance, and these are Maxwell's equations. So the problem is how to solve this equation. This is the uh, problem. In a two-dimensional uh, axisymmetric uh, system, uh, that the equilibrium, equilibrium equation can be significantly reduced to a single uh, second-order elliptic PDE. That is called the grad shafranoff equation. And that is uh, very easy to solve because the, the equation type is the same as the Poisson's equation. So very easy. And uh, I didn't speak about this, but uh, uh, this is uh, uh, we dropped uh, plasma flow uh, velocity field B. But even if we include uh, plasma flow in this uh, toroidal direction, the equation type is, uh, doesn't change, which remains elliptic. So it is easy to solve. But <clears throat> even in the axisymmetric system, if we try to include poroidal uh, flow, uh, the equation type change, can change uh, to a hyperbolic type. And uh, uh, the, the region of the hyperbolic uh, type is uh, some part, and uh, some part is still remains uh, elliptic. So uh, it is very difficult to solve this uh, equation uh, systematically, even in 2D system. And uh, if we go to 3D, <coughs> the problem uh, becomes much more complicated. And uh, in the world, there are several uh, famous uh, numerical codes to calculate such an equilibrium, but they assume something. Uh, for example, uh, VMEC code, which is uh, probably uh, most used 
uh, code in the world. And it, uh, that assumes the uh, existence of the nested flux surface. But uh, this kind of nested flux surface is uh, guaranteed only for uh, some symmetric system, like axisymmetric system. Uh, because the, in the three-dimensional system, magnetic field lines uh, is not integrable in general. So <clears throat> this kind of uh, uh, flux surface uh, doesn't exist in general. So uh, uh, the, uh, if we follow the magnetic field lines, then we may find this, this kind of island structure, which uh, rotates in the... Uh, porous plasma. So it, this is a helical structure inside the plasma. And also, a uh, magnetic field can be stochastic in this kind of system. But uh, this code assumes the existence of this uh, nested flux surface. This is a big assumption. I listed some other uh, numerical codes, but uh, everyone assumes something. For example, no plasma rotation, or a, a pressure is flat in each layer, some, uh, some unphysical, I, I would say, uh, assumption. So there's no perfect one. So the final goal of this research is to develop a new code that can include a magnetic island, equilibrium with a magnetic island, or even stochastic magnetic field. And uh, that can include general plasma rotation. And also that can uh, classify the equilibrium in some systematic way. I will explain this uh, in some detail later. So in this presentation, I would propose a new method to do this. The idea of the new method may be best understood by using a harmonic oscillator which is an example of a finite degrees of freedom, the simplest one. Uh, this is the Hamiltonian for the uh, harmonic oscillator. Uh, P is the canonical momentum, and Q is the canonical coordinate. And uh, this is kinetic energy, and this is the potential energy. So H is a constant for this harmonic oscillator, uh, without dissipation, of course. <laughs> the state vector is Q and P. And the evolution equation for this state vector is given by this one. The, this curly bracket is a Poisson bracket uh, defined by this. And if we rewrite this equation, we get uh, this equation. Uh, this is uh, just, I will rewrite the equation. And uh, so the evolution of this state vector is given by the gradient of the Hamiltonian multiplied by this Poisson tensor. This is a skew symmetric tensor. And this is a, a schematic view of the phase space. This is Q, and this is P. And these circles are a constant Hamiltonian. So the physical motion occurs along this constant Hamiltonian. And this vector field is a, firstly the gradient of the Hamiltonian, which is in this direction, red one. And the physical motion occurs in this direction. So that means this uh, role of this uh, Poisson tensor is to change the direction of this vector 90 degrees. Okay, so the idea comes. Uh, if we uh, consider an artificial dynamics where the Poisson tensor is operated twice, what happens? Then uh, the direction of this vector uh, changes 90 degrees twice. And uh, the motion occurs in this direction, the blue one. Okay. Then the energy of the system changes, monotonically decreases, and uh, eventually the system goes to the origin, which is a stationary state of this system, although it is a trivial one. Okay. So the evolution equation for this artificial dynamics is given here. <clears throat> uh, this is the original one. But uh, we have one more operation of J uh, Poisson tensor. And for data use, I put uh, some symmetric kernel here, which has a definite sign. 
But uh, uh, this can be uh, simply uh, some unit tensor. 1, 0, 0, 1 is OK. Or 2, 0, 0, 2 may be OK. 2, 0, 0, 1 is also OK. Uh, we, we have many choices. But anyway, uh, we input some uh, kernel with a different sign here. Then the evolution equation is here, uh, given this by this one. And the energy of the system monotonically changes. Okay. Then uh, the, uh, for this example, this uh, extremum of the energy gives you the equilibrium of the system. And uh, we apply this idea to the fluid system. <clears throat> so ideal fluid can be also written by the Poisson brackets and the Hamiltonian, like this. In this case, u is a field of variables, like velocity field or magnetic field, like this. And the Hamiltonian is given by this, h, and this is a Poisson bracket for the fields. And so for this system, uh, without dissipation, the energy is, of course, conserved, because this is a Hamiltonian system. And uh, the special point for the uh, ideal fluid system is that the system has another type of invariant called Casimir invariant, which is defined by this equation. So for any functional F, the Casimir invariant is a null space of the Poisson bracket. Okay. So example is an enthalpy in the 2D ideal fluid or magnetic helicity in the ideal MHD. Because of the existence of this Casimir invariant, the stationary state have a, some rich structure, not the you know, trivial stationary state. <clears throat> so how to construct this artificial dynamics? Uh, in this paper, uh, the artificial dynamics is uh, very much uh, explored. And uh, the system, evolution of the system is given by this double bracket, or we call this a symmetric bracket, which is defined by this one. Or a definition of this double bracket is given here. And uh, this is the evolution equation for the finite divisor freedom example. So we have the original system and one more operation of the Poisson bracket, and we put input some uh, symmetric kernel here. So the structure is uh, exactly the same. This is the original dynamics. Uh, this is the physical original dynamics. And uh, we have one more operation on the Poisson bracket. And we e input some symmetric kernel, just like this. And because of this uh, bracket dynamics, uh, time evolution of any functional f is given by this uh, double bracket between f and Hamiltonian. Okay. So, if we input Hamiltonian itself here, then it gives you this equation. And uh, because the Poisson bracket is Q-symmetric, and we have here and here, and this is a kernel with a definite sign. So this right-hand side is non-positive. Then uh, if the Hamiltonian decreases monotonically, and it goes to the dH dt equals zero. In that case, uh, this Poisson bracket between the dynamical variable and the Hamiltonian must be zero. And this is exactly the stationary state of the original system. So this gives you the equilibrium. <clears throat> the how about the Casimir invariance? Uh, this is the time evolution of the Casimir invariance. And C is input here. And this is the, according to the definition. Then, uh, because of the definition of the Casimir invariance, this is trivially zero. That means the Casimir invariance is preserved even in the artificial dynamics. Therefore, uh, this method can give you an equilibrium of ideal fluid uh, by preserving some Casimir invariance. So, we just solved some evolution equation of the artificial dynamics. So that doesn't assume some nested flux surfaces. 
uh, it can include magnetic islands or even stochasticity. And also, there's no assumption on the plasma rotation or plasma flow. And also, in that last point, the Cashmere invariants can classify the equilibrium in a systematic way. This is uh, theoretically a good point. So this is a schematic view of the, uh, our artificial dynamics method, <coughs> which is called uh, simulated annealing. Uh, uh, these, we see these three sheets, and uh, on each sheet, the values of the Cashmere invariant is the same. And on each sheet, we have Hamiltonian contour. Okay. So the system, the physical system, without dispersion, uh, goes around this, along this uh, constant Hamiltonian. But according to the uh, artificial dynamics, the system goes to the energy extremum, which is an equilibrium of the ideal fluid. And uh, uh, for example, the energy of the system can change by introducing some physical uh, dissipation. But uh, by introducing the physical dissipation, the values of the Cashmere invariant also change. So that means the, the system goes to a different Cashmere uh, leaf. So the equilibrium cannot be classified by this method. So the advantage of our new method is to classify this equilibrium by a Cashmere invariant. <clears throat> this is a review of the recent uh, research on this artificial dynamics. And in this paper, as mentioned, I mentioned before, uh, the artificial dynamics method is uh, greatly uh, extended. And after that, we applied this uh, idea to the uh, two-dimensional uh, plasma dynamics in these papers, although it, which is a low-pressure uh, plasma on the two-dimensional uh, doubly periodic domain. And uh, recently, we have uh, extended this uh, method to the three-dimensional system, although the pressure is still low. And uh, another type of the dynamics is uh, now studied by the uh, theory group at the Max Planck Institute, and we had a, a discussion this year. <clears throat> so in the following, uh, I'm using the, this uh, so-called uh, low beta reduced MHD. Uh, low beta means the low pressure, so pressure is uh, dropped. And uh, reduced means uh, this is greatly reduced from the original MHD. And uh, we assume some strong magnetic field and the uh, motion of the plasma fluid occurs on the plane perpendicular to the strong magnetic field. So this is the uh, vorticity equation. U is the vorticity. And uh, this is the Ohm's law along the magnetic field line. But anyway, uh, this is uh, uh, two variable systems. <clears throat> so for this system, uh, we constructed the simulated annealing. So for this model, uh, the dy dynamical variables are vorticity and uh, uh, stream function for the magnetic field. And this is the Hamiltonian for this system. And this is the kinetic energy, and this is magnetic energy. And the Poisson tensor is given by this equation. So we can construct the artificial dynamics. <clears throat> and in this paper, uh, by solving the artificial dynamics for this system, we succeeded to uh, generate some uh, equilibrium with a helical deformation, which is not a, a symmetric system. I mean, the plasma itself is a cylinder but uh, inside it can deform three-dimensionally. That, that is our uh, simulation at present. <clears throat> and uh, in the cylindrical uh, plasma, if the physical quantity is just a function of the radius, then that is the uh, equilibrium of the system. But if we put some helical perturbation, then if the system is unstable against that perturbation, then the low lower energy state 
may be obtained as a uh, stationary state or equilibrium uh, with uh, some helical structure. So that was our uh, simulation result in this paper. <laughs> then uh, I'd like to uh, discuss some uh, points about this new method. Uh, one question may be, how the simulation results depend on the choice of the symmetric kernel? As I explained uh, in the finite dimensional uh, degrees of freedom example, the harmonic oscillator, the choice of the symmetric kernel is rather arbitrary. If the, uh, the sign is positive definite or negative definite, then it may be okay. So we have many choices. So if we change this symmetric kernel for the simulated annealing, then result, does the result change or not? This is first question. And the second question is, uh, do the obtained stationary state differ depending on the initial conditions on the same Casimiri? So as I showed you the schematic picture of the simulated annealing, uh, on the same uh, Casimir leaf, the, we give the some initial condition, then the system evolves according to the artificial dynamics. And if we reach the same energy extremum, then which is, uh, that is uh, uh, equilibrium. But if we start from another initial condition on the same Kashimiya leaf, does it go to the same equilibrium or not? This is the second question. For answering the first question, we uh, tried three types of the symmetric kernel. <clears throat> the first one is like this. We just have a delta function in the diagonal elements. Uh, this is the standard one. Uh, I mean, uh, this is corresponds to the system where the Poisson bracket is just operated twice. That's all. And uh, the third one has a smoothing effect in all three directions. And the Green's function for the, the three-dimensional system is put as a diagonal, system, uh, diagonal element. <clears throat> and the second one is a mixed type. And in the cylinder, theta and the theta direction, we have a smoothing effect. But in the radial direction, we don't have a, a smoothing effect. That's the second type. And then let's try uh, the simulated annealing from the same initial condition by using this, these three types of the symmetric kernel. Okay, uh, this is a rather detailed uh, information for you, and the, but the initial condition is given like this. This is the initial condition for the vorticity, and this is the initial condition for the magnetic flux function. And for the magnetic flux function, we have a cylindrically symmetric uh, state which is already an equilibrium, but we input some helical perturbation here. It's very small amplitude helical perturbation here. And this uh, axisymmetric system is unstable against this helical perturbation. So we expect that the system goes to a lower energy state by amplifying the helical perturbation. And these are the radial structure of the initial perturbation. So let's skip it. And this is the time evolution of the system, uh, energy. Uh, this is time, and this is the total energy of the system. And uh, for all three uh, types of the symmetric kernel, the energy starts to decrease, but uh, unfortunately, this SA1, without any smoothing effect in the all direction, uh, it was unstable numerically. Uh, I need to improve this point, but uh, uh, at, at present, I, I didn't uh, get a, a proper solution. But uh, for the other two types of the symmetric kernel, the energy changes monotonically and uh, went to the, some uh, stationary state. <clears throat> uh, this is the radial structure of the helical perturbation. This is the radius of the cylinder, and this is the amplitude of the uh, helical component of the magnetic flux function psi. And we see here that this is the 2-1 component 
two one is the mode number of the helical perturbation, and the SA two and SA three nearly overlap. And uh, this is the four two component, which is a higher harmonic for the helical perturbation, and the SA two and SA three almost overlap each other. So this means that uh, uh, by using a different symmetric kernel, we get uh, almost the same uh, final uh, state or equilibrium. And this is the current density. And uh, we see some spiky behavior. So we need to in, uh, increase the radial resolution. But uh, it's basically the same. So the answer for the first question is that the final solution may not depend on the uh, choice of the symmetric kernel. That is the answer for the first question. And let's go to the second question. And uh, starting from a different initial condition, by, but using the same symmetric kernel, the final state, is the final state different or the same? <clears throat> so this is, again, the initial condition for the uh, simulated annealing. We again have a, a radially symmetric, cylindrically symmetric component for the magnetic field, and we put some small helical perturbation. But uh, uh, the Kashmir invariance for the, this low beta reduced MHD is given here. We have two Kashmir invariants. One is related to the magnetic helicity, which is the integral of psi in the whole domain. The other one is the integral of the vorticity in the whole domain. And according to this uh, initial condition, if we integrate in the whole domain, uh, this perturbation part uh, vanishes. So uh, any choice of the initial amplitude for the helical perturbation can give you the same uh, initial condition on the same Kashmir leaf. Okay. And also, in addition to them, uh, we have also a cross helicity as a conserved quantity, which is uh, integral of u and psi. But the u is given by this sign, and psi is given by cosine. So integral of this uh, product is also the same for any choice of the initial perturbation amplitude. So we changed this initial amplitude. Then uh, we uh, tried the simulated annealing. <clears throat> the result is given here. Uh, this is time, and this is the total energy of the system. And the red curve shows the reference case, which is the, the result I just presented before. And the blue curve shows that initial condition uh, with the vorticity component is uh, 100 times smaller than the reference case. And the magnetic field part is the same. So the initial energy is different. But uh, in both cases, the energy decreases monotonically. And uh, eventually, it reaches an um, uh, equilibrium state. Uh, numerically, I mean. And this is the result, uh, which is a rather messy slide. So this is radial uh, coordinate. And this is the amplitude of the helical uh, component of the magnetic flux function. <clears throat> and here, we have two curves. And the 2-1 component uh, of the helical uh, perturbation of the magnetic field. And there, they overlap each other. But this 4-2 component, the higher harmonics component, is uh, different at the final state. And this is the current density. Also, the 2 1 components, the dominant harmonics is the same, but the higher harmonics is different. So, the answer to the uh, second question is that the final state may be different, starting from the different initial condition on the same Cassini leaf. So, let me summarize my talk. Uh, I in this presentation, I proposed a new method to calculate three-dimensional MHD equilibrium, which is based on the Hamiltonian field theory. <clears throat> and uh, I developed a uh, numerical code to get uh, uh, equilibrium with a helical perturbation 
of a cylindrical plasma by using the low beta reduced MHD model. And uh, I tried uh, three types of the uh, sy symmetric kernel for the uh, artificial dynamics. And uh, unfortunately, one of them was, was un un numerically unstable, but uh, two of them gave the almost the same result, starting from the initial condition. And for the second question, uh, starting from the different initial condition on the same Kashmir leaf, then the equilibrium obtained may be different. That's all. Thank you very much. <laughs>